I'm going to do a real quick video here on this issue of what does it mean to repent of your sins. This is something I've been dealing with people for years and years and years and years on this issue. I've preached many, many studies on the issue of biblical repentance, what is it, and everything. Um, but I just want to do a real quick little video here just to kind of, uh, just to give you a basic understanding of what this whole thing is. Again, I've done scores of videos that have a lot of scripture in them. We're only going to go over one particular scripture, but I'm going to just want to bring up a couple things here. Um, uh, some of the old hymns, a lot of the old time Christians would talk about you need to repent of your sin to be saved. And there's a lot of confusion. The devil has sent a lot of people in there to, to sow uh, a lot of false professing Christians. You know, they, they've they been sent in by the devil to sow seeds of discord and confusion and things. And uh, they're trying to make, you know, repenting of sins. And they, they twist it and everything else uh, from what it originally meant. And um, I read a lot of books old-time Christians, um, very familiar with a lot of the old-time preaching and things like that. I know exactly what they meant by repent of sins. So I'm going to talk about that. Uh, first of all, you have older hymns. A lot of the older hymns talked about repenting of sins. I'll give you a good example, victory in Jesus. You know, there's a, one line that says, Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. Old hymn, Then I repented of my sins. And another one is, uh, the old account was settled long ago. And there's a part in it which says, O sinner, seek the Lord, repent of all your sin, for thus he hath commanded, if you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below. You know, it goes on. And there's, there's a bunch more. A lot of the old hymns had the thing of repenting of sins. Okay? Now, there are three basic systems of belief in terms of salvation. And I know that there are shades of of each one of these three different things. You have Lordship Salvation, you have Easy Believism, and then you have True Biblical Salvation. Okay? Um, Lordship Salvation. All right. Lordship Salvation is the repentance comes before salvation and must be continued as a perpetual part of being saved. All right? Um, Sister Sally over at Heal and Restore, her channel over there, she did a thing recently on the Church of Wells. The Church of Wells is very big on Lordship Salvation. It's you must continually, perpetually, you have to be saved. You have to, you know, we are being saved. Okay, that's Lordship Salvation. If Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, then you, you've never been saved and things like this, you know, or you've fallen away and you, you're, it's works. It's, it's a perpetual system of works. Again, I've had that thing put on me so many times. I teach, you know, uh, Lordship Salvation because I say uh, your life will change at salvation, and it will. Uh, there will be many changes that will happen. Does that mean that you're not going to sin? You're going to sin big time after you get saved. Let me tell you, <laughs> okay? Uh, you're going to have some really, really, you know, times, and you're really going to miserably fail the Lord. Doesn't mean you didn't get saved, all right? And the reason I'll a lot of times come out and say, you know, tell people, you know, make sure that you got saved. Are you sure that you're saved? You're messing around with this and messing around with that? Because I see people that are professing Christians, and they're just like, they're living just like the world. They look just like the world. They act just like the world. And I'm going, please just make sure that you're saved here. And when and you say, well, yeah, I've did, done everything that, you know, I've put my faith in Jesus Christ. And, and you know, I've come to him as a sinner. And I've, you know, called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And, you know, okay, well, then you need to clean some things up in your life there. I'm not going to, you know, I've talked to people that, that uh, I know that they're saved, but they're just messing around in the world. All right, but Lordship Salvationists, they use, they twist the thing of repenting of sin as a continuous, perpetual life that you have to, you know, die in a state of grace. You know, Roman Catholicism, it's kind of interesting. Um, that's Lordship Salvation. And uh, the second one, easy believism, they'll call themselves free grace or other things. I call them fruitcakes, whatever else, you know, they're just Luciferians. And what they teach is that there is no repentance. Uh, Jack Hiles was a big Lord... Or, uh, he attacked Lordship Salvation, but he twisted the meaning of it. Jack Hiles was a big faker. Um, he was a sex pervert. Uh, again, you know, proven fact. I mean, his daughter came out for crying out loud, and she's just like, my, yeah, my dad was, you know, committing adultery with Deacon's wife, Jenny Nishik, his secretary, Jack Hiles' secretary. They had a door leading between the two offices, and I don't want to know any further. But the guy was just totally wicked. And he came out with this thing of... Um, if you have to repent to be saved, does that mean you have to repent of 
all of the sins that you've ever committed. You have to remember everything you've ever done. <laughs> and it's like, no, that's you're twisting the meaning. But uh, he came out with a thing of the quick prayerism, the, the just go out and, and knock doors. We're going soul winning. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing. You're going out with an expected end saying we are definitely, we've won souls today. And when they, and you check into the thing of them winning souls, all it is in reality is they're getting people to, they're forcing people into praying prayers or whatever else. And they say, we've won a soul. And then that person that's been uh, saved, they don't ever amount to anything. And we used to run into these people all the time when I used to go door to door, uh, both with Liberty Baptist Church in down in Pennsylvania and then Bible Believers Fellowship. We'd go out door to door, talk to people. So many people, so many people uh, believed in vain. As the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You know, there were so many people that, that had professed something and they had a, one time I believed and they had just no belief anymore. It was just, it was, you know, it was very, very tragic, very sad. But again, these are the ones that are going to attack the thing of repent of your sins to be saved. Okay, they're going to be the ones that are going to attack you the hardest if you ever make that saying, if you say, you know, you need to repent of your sins. But what does repent of your sins really mean? What does, you know, the songs and, you know, you have like Lester Roloff, I know he'd preach about, uh, you know, repent. You better repent of your sins to be saved, you know, and things. Uh, some of the Jack Tr Chick tracks, they'll talk about repenting of your sins. You need to repent of your sins and things. No, they'll make a big issue of this. These easy believers and heretics. Biblical repentance. Okay, what is biblical repentance? Biblical repentance is t coming to a point where you say, you know, my life is a wreck. I've just ruined things. I'm a sinner. If somebody says, oh, you're good. You're good. I'm not good. If, if I have to stand on my own works to get to heaven, I'm not making it. So see, that eliminates the first possibility, the Lordship salvation thing. Because you know, you can never work your way to heaven. You know, you realize I've messed up my whole life. And, you know, my only chance is, you know, Jesus Christ and His righteousness, you know. So you come to the Lord broken and you say, I, I, my self-righteousness, you know, I'm, I'm not self-righteous anymore. I'm not a good person. I'm a wicked person. I need the Lord's help, all right? And there's a change there as far as when you repent of your sins, you're saying not, I'm going to live holy and perfect from now on. You're saying, I need help, you know. Um, the Bible talks about let him that stole steal no more. You know, and you have some guy that's a thief. Um, don't tell me a guy that's a thief is living a good life. They're not. They're paranoid. Why? Because they're having to run from the law all the time. Some guy comes along, he's, he's lived as a thief for years and years and years. He doesn't say, I want to get saved and continue in this. All right? He says, I want to get saved because I want out of that lifestyle. I was a pornography addict before I got saved. Do you think I wanted to continue that? as a saved man and try to justify it by saying, you know, well, you know, I believed, I believed. Of course not. I needed help. And I know I wasn't able to help myself, you see. See, that's the difference here. I came to the Lord broken. I said, I'm a sinner. God, please save me. And I had a whole host of other sin issues, you know. My list of sins was getting longer and longer as time went by and I'm going, I need help. I, I need big help. And if you're saved, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You came to a point where you're just like, I'm at the end of myself. I'm just rotten. I need help. You need help having that changed life. You want a changed life. You want to start over again. And you're not going to understand everything that the Lord's going to sanctify out of your life right at that point. But you know, you know what sins you're guilty of. And you know how it's ruining your life. You see. So some guy comes along and he says, you need to repent of your sin to be saved. What you're thinking is, I got to stop doing this thing. I have to, uh, but I can't quit it on my own. I need help. I realize I'm I'm basically on a runaway locomotive right now, and the bridge is out up ahead. And if I don't get help soon, I'm going to crash. It's going to be the end of my life. Again, uh, another thing I'll just say about my own personal testimony. I was an adrenaline junkie, and it was just like, you know, let's see how fast I can go this time. Uh, let's let's see how close to death I can get, you know. I mean, it was just, I was just trying to find the next thrill with motorcycles and ATVs and fast cars and things like that. And it was just, just pushing that envelope all the time. And I knew in the back of my mind, I never thought I'd see 40 years old. 
I remember thinking that. I thought, I'm going to be lucky if I get to 30. <laughs> I got saved when I was 25. And um, it was just, I'd get a fast bike and I'd ride it and act crazy and things on, on it. And it'd go a little while and, and uh, you know, and then it'd be like, well, that's not fast enough or not powerful enough. I'm going to try this now. And I'd do this and I'd try that speed thing and this speed thing and whatever else. Yeah. You see, somebody come to me and say, you need to repent. You know, I wouldn't have touched, said, no, by repent, what do you mean by that? Are you saying I have to turn from every one of my sins? Are you saying repentance is a change of, you know, from unbelief to belief? <laughs> I knew I needed to repent. I knew I needed to be saved and I needed to quit doing this thing, but I needed God's help to do it, you see. So just wanted to say that thing here. If you're new to this whole subject, you know, uh, it's just, it's really, really disgusting and, you know, again, these easy believers and people, you know, it's just belief. You say, okay, well, I believe Jesus died for my sins, and I believe that I have a changed life afterward. Sorry, then you're not saved. You know, you're a false convert. <laughs> I thought it was just belief, you know. And if it's just belief, all people have to do is just mentally make a decision. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I've talked to so many people that believe that way. They're not saved. <laughs> they weren't saved. I mean, good night. I've met so many people that profess to be Christians, and you just look at their life, they're just wicked. I mean, total, just, they'll scam you out of your money. They'll stab you in the back. They'll do whatever. Horrible, horrible people. But they believe in Jesus. I mean, again, let's just say easy believism is, is, is the right one. Just belief, just belief. Uh, if that's true, do you realize how many professing Christians are in this country? Uh, where's the revival at? Where's the big, powerful moving of the Holy Spirit and things? It's not there. You know, it's just disgusting. But let's just look at a verse here real quickly. Two verses of Scripture. Uh, very good verses to prove this, what I'm saying. And again, I've gone through hundreds of Scriptures on this issue, proving what I'm saying here. But Second Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 and 11. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Are you sorry towards God? It's not about, I'm going from unbelief to belief or something. Sorrow, there's no sorrow involved with that. If, you have, if you're in unbelief, if you don't believe in Jesus dying on the cross for your sins, is there really any kind of a, I've messed up my life there or anything? No. And a lot of these people too that are easy believers them, they're uh, childhood conversions. Look at their testimonies. Look for them. They don't have them. They can't tell you, boy, I sure was wicked back before I got saved. They won't tell you anything like that. You look into them, I got saved as a two-year-old or something like this. Boy, you know, coming out of a life of sin there, you know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Almost, in fact, I would say almost all of these people I've dealt with over the years, you check them, ask them for their testimony. They got saved as little children. Most before the age of accountability, before they could even understand. You know, it's crazy. And I was a victim of that myself. I did some little prayer in uh, Sunday school back when I was eight years old, and I thought for many, many years, I thought, I guess that's when I got saved. I was very confused on the issue. But what happens when you get really saved? Verse 11, For behold this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, in all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. You have to be approved as a Christian. And that will become readily apparent as time goes on and things get worse and worse and persecution of Christians actually gets stronger. Uh, we are right at the, the brink of that thing happening. Uh, it's, it's incredible to me. Um, you know, I see all these people, you know, uh, sodomites and things like that, and they'll say that you're guilty of a hate crime if you're against sodomy. And you go, well, so I don't have a voice. I'm not, oh, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm going to persecute you or kill you or anything. Yet, you know, atheists, you know, I've had them, they say, you're, you're mentally ill, you need to have professional help and things. I had one here recently, and I was like, so basically I should be put in prison and tortured or put on medication. Well, I wasn't saying that. I think that it's good for you to have your own opinion. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Just wait till they have the power, they're going to try to come after us. That's why I fight so hard, this whole system. But you see, when it comes, when persecution comes, there has to be a approval process. You have somebody come in and they say, I'm a Christian. 
So where do you people meet? I want to know where you meet. I want to fellowship with you. You just go, oh, praise the Lord. You believe Jesus died for your sins? Well, come on in. You know, <laughs> no. You're going to have to sit that person down and say, you say you're a Christian. Okay, well, I have some questions for you. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this doctrine? That, what's your testimony? You know, some guy, well, I got saved when I was two years old. Uh, you wouldn't have understood sin back then. You see? So watch out for people warning you about this thing of you need to repent to be saved. You know, to be saved. You, know, you need to repent of your sins and things like this. Watch out for that. And again, the easy believes them crowd. They're the most demonic out there right now, I believe. Lordship salvation, you know, it's just whatever. It's just Calvinism, basically. Uh, but this easy believes them thing, um, again, you'll see them. They'll, they'll mess around with sin. And they get really irritated when you start to come in, condemn certain sins that they're guilty of. They don't like that. Because, you see, they had a conversion experience, which was just emotional or whatever else. And there was no coming to the end of themselves. There was no godly sorrow there. It was just the sorrow of the world. So, uh, just wanted to make that little video here real quick. Probably went over actually being a little video, but <laughs> just some important things I needed to say. Um, don't be ashamed to say repent of sins. You know, if you're saying it from a Lordship Salvation perspective where you have to continually, perpetually repent of your sins all the time or you lose your salvation or something, no, sorry, that's false. If you're saying it just as a, somebody, you say to somebody, it's wicked, you need to repent of your sins, pal. That is simply, you know, the old time way of saying, you know, you need to have a changed attitude towards your sin. You need to understand that those sins, you need to turn from what you're doing. You need to change your lifestyle there. And Jesus Christ is the only one that can help you to do it. You can't do it on your own. You can't do Lordship Salvation. That doesn't work. And if you say, I'm going to get saved without that repentance, then you get into easy believism. So I'm going to be saved and I'm just going to keep my sins and just go on and continue doing them and not feel any kind of guilt about it. Uh, that doesn't work. When you get saved, you will feel a major change. You know, one of the first things that's going to go, did for me, and I know a lot of other testimonies, people said the same thing, is uh, television. Television and movies. One of the first things that goes when you get born again, you all of a sudden you're just like, I can't believe this. They're they're swearing all the time. I, uh, uh, it just it it should just you know bother you. It'll irritate you. Why? Well, because the Bible talks about Lot. He was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Somebody who's genuinely saved is going to be vexed by profanity. You get a little false convert like Stephen Anderson. He uses profanity from the pulpit, and most of his his uh, viewers they comment in this channel. I've had to ban so many of them over the years. Using profanity, including the F word. You know? I'm going, yeah, okay, you people are saved. Easy believism. That's what these people are. It's, it's, it's tragic. It really is. Uh, they're thinking that they're saved and they're not. So, just wanted to make that video here and uh, just stand firm. And, um, you know, don't let people get you down if you're saying that, you know, saying to people, hey, you need to repent of your sins and things like that. I just want to say one other thing. Another old time saying that they had, they'd say, so-and-so got religion. And what they meant by that is there's a changed life. They'd see some guys out carousing, running around with women, and he's drinking and fighting and whatever else. And uh, all of a sudden he changed. And he's not cussing, and he's not drinking. He's cleaned up. He's witnessing about Jesus Christ. They say, oh, I got religion. Mm -hmm. And you see, that's where this saying came from, that time period back then when they said, you need to repent of your sins. That's what they meant. It's not having to turn from each of your sins and continually live a perpetual sinless life. That's not it. And it's not some kind of a thing of turning from unbelief to belief. That's not it either. So stick with what the Bible says about repentance. Okay? Thank you for watching.